What's up, folks? How's it going? If I believe I'm I'm turning into um, Jennifer Granholm because if this moves just over here, I'd kind of be Jennifer Granholm, and what a frightening proposition that would be. Uh, I'd first like to announce that I believe I've broken a world record. I believe I am the first person on the history of this planet, uh, or in the history of this planet, I should say, in the history on this planet, to walk into a bookstore and purchase the Holy Quran and Mein Kampf on the same day. I don't think anyone has ever done that before, and I dare you to prove me wrong. I want it documented that I'm the first person to fucking do this. And I should, in, in a safer world, I'd be put on some sort of list. Um, but yeah, so I have a Koran now. Uh, so, you know, if people want to start shit, I have a perfect little reference book here uh, with English translation and commentary, uh, Mulana Muhammad Ali. Looks pretty fucking official. I know that the the Muslims always are like, oh no 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 no, that's not, that is not right. That is not right translation. It all wrong. You know, it, it it's it's funny that they say, um, you know, you'd think it would be an exaggeration to say that you can open almost any given page, and you know, read some fucked up shit. But, you know, it's pretty much true. And Allah creates you, then he causes you to die, and you who is brought back to the worst part of life so that he knows nothing after having knowledge. Surely Allah is knowing and powerful. Yeah, he sounds like kind of a great guy. Yeah. Um, so I got my Quran. Just a couple more things to, to, to get in the religious text uh, world, and, and I'll have a full collection. Uh, I also picked up my conf, as I said. Um, because I've been talking about um, fascism and, and things like that a lot recently. Um, mainly because not only do I find it interesting, but I find that uh, everyone, meaning people on all different political you know, alignments, throws around words like fascism or Nazi, calls people Nazis or compares people to that thing. And they're usually wrong when they do it, and no one corrects them because fascism has become a pejorative term, has become a caricature that can be applied to anything that you don't like. And that's very, very bad for everybody because it, it throws off the entire, um, you know, the entire fucking conversation. Um, so I thought it would be important to have a reference book for fascism. Now... A lot of people will argue that Mein Kampf is not a good book for this because even Mussolini, the creator of fascism, uh, said that he didn't like the book, he thought it was full of cliches, and blah, 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 blah. Well, uh, Mussolini, uh, as you know, was strung up like a dog by his own people, so you know, I think any dictator that can't uh, prevent that from happening doesn't have any position to fucking speak. Now, I've said this before, and people have been like, well, they tried to kill Hitler a bunch of times. Yeah, they tried, didn't they, but he took his own life. Uh, he was not strung up like a fucking dog like Mussolini. Uh, so I'm going to take Hitler's uh, advice when it comes to uh, fascism because he's the only one that made it work, uh, at least for a while. Now, um, you know, and if you don't want to listen to Hitler, that's your own problem um, because he's one of the most influential people in the history of all of mankind. Uh, so to not listen to what he has to say would be uh, pretty fucking dumb, okay? Um, just like I've read what Jesus said, because I recognize that, real or not, he's an influential character in our world. Um, all right. So one thing that, that, that you know people always compare, at least more often, compare uh, right-wing movements to Nazis or fascism or whatever. But lately, there's been a lot of uh, attempts to try to compare left-wing liberal movements toward, to fascism. And uh, I completely disagree. Not to say that, that left-wing movements can't turn into something bad, but I don't think that there's any sign of fascism. Let me explain what this... Um, I've selected a paragraph. Right? This is from Philosophy and Party. It was self-evident that the new movement could hope to achieve the necessary importance and the required strength for this gigantic struggle 
only if it succeeded from the very first day in arousing in the hearts of its supporters the holy conviction that with political life or I'm sorry that with polit with it political life would be was to be given not a new election slogan but a new philosophy of fundamental significance all right not a new election slogan but a new philosophy of fundamental significance uh, one thing I want to note this entire paragraph is one sentence <laughs> He tended to ramble, not a writer, a, a talker, not a writer. Um, all right. This, this is one thing that we don't see in the liberal movement. Because one problem that liberals have always had in this country, um, and especially the party that best represents liberals right now, the Democratic Party, um, is so incapable of picking a direction or a mission statement or a goal that they can't even get shit done that they want done when they're the majority. Okay, uh, the exact opposite is true on the right, especially with this neoconservative uh, movement, general neoconservative movement, which is really a movement towards a, a more uh, theologically based um, government. Right? That's a philosophy. Okay, that's something that has some, um, you know, some weight to it. That's something people can get behind. You know, people point. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, Right-wing pundits have, have talked about, oh, you know, Obama gave, uh, Hitler gave good speeches too. Um, first of all, Obama does not make anywhere near as good of a speech as Adolf Hitler. Okay, let's not fucking let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, but look at the speeches. I mean, what what is what has Obama ever said? Uh, we can do it, or whatever. Uh, or is that it? We can do it. I don't remember what the fuck it was. Change all this shit. These are just slogans. That doesn't mean anything. Um, that's there's no strong, um, you know, philosophical base to that. There's no goal to that. We can do it. Doesn't mean shit. And even the most hardcore Obama supporters recognize that. Um, most of them even recognize that shit out loud. Okay. So it's it's less important to look at somebody like Obama, who is obviously uh, for the you know created by the Democratic Party to sell itself. Okay, there's no denying that. Um, th that's not the kind of person that you have to be worried about here. Okay, you need to be worried about a movement with a sound uh, goal and and uh, a sound philosophical mission. Okay. Um, that's why I think Islamofascism is an appropriate term, because Islam has a stated goal, which is the either assimilation or extermination of every human being on the planet. Um, that's a good way to start. All right, I think that's one of the reasons why any intelligent person would say something like Islamofascism. All right, but it's very important that we understand this shit. Okay. And I, I know a lot of people don't like to talk about this stuff. Some people find it very interesting. A lot of people don't like to talk about all the negative shit that I talk about. And the matter-of-fact way that I discuss things like those executions in Sri Lanka, the reason that I do that is because if you put emotion into something like this, you lose all perspective, okay? Um, you know, the news and information is presented to you emotionally, and you learn about things like executions and from an emotional basis. And that's not a good way to do it, okay? It's relying on emotions uh, to run our world that's got us all fucked up anyway. Yes, I have an Aladdin cup. What else did I want to talk about? Um, I went to the, oh, the doctor story. I went to the doctor yesterday. Um, I get a blood test every couple of weeks for this medication that I'm taking. And the woman that does the bloodletting, removes the blood, uh, is kind of fucking dumb. All right, I've known this for months. She also has an inordinate amount of Christmas decorations. She filled this entire office, big office too, nice doctor's office, just full of Christmas decorations from top to bottom everywhere. It was obnoxious. And the doctor who owns the place is Jewish, so I can only imagine what the fuck he thinks about it. But I already knew she was fucking dumb. Okay. Now, I was going to go to the library after I was done at the doctor's office, so I had my library books, two novels, which I'd already read, and... Uh, the Portable Atheist, which is a collection of atheist-related essays uh, edited by uh, Christopher Hitchens. Okay, so what's an easier thing to read in the doctor's office? Well, the Portable Atheist, because little bite-sized chunks. I can read that, 
you know. So I bring that in with me, not with the intention of drawing it. You know, I didn't want to draw attention to myself. I just wanted to have something to read because I knew I was going to be there for a while. So finally, she comes in to do the blood test. I put the book down on the counter, and I lay down. And she's about to put the needle in. And she's like, "Oh, what are you reading?" Okay. She asked me. Recognize this. She asked me. Oh, what are you reading? And I said, it's called The Portable Atheist. That's all I said. She then said, oh, you're an atheist? Okay. I said, yeah. And she replied, shame on you. And I was like, what? And, again, she asked me all of these questions. I didn't say, sh I did not start the conversation. Okay. The thing that pissed me off wasn't that she said that to me so much because sometimes I, I find it honestly refreshing when Christians are so blunt. Though I know that's not why she was doing it. She was doing it because she was stupid and couldn't, didn't even fathom the idea that there could be an atheist walking around here. The thing that pissed me off was that there was nothing I could say. I couldn't react in the way I wanted to, which was, excuse me, uh, you know, I'm a patient. What the f are you talking about? Because she had a needle in my fucking arm, you know. I'm totally at the mercy of her in that situation. There's nothing I can do. Um, you know, I'm a, I, I, because I'm an incredibly forgiving person, which is something that cannot be said about a lot of Christians, I didn't say shit to her boss. Um, I, I probably should have, because you do, don't fucking t say that shit to a customer. God damn it. I wouldn't say anything to anybody, okay? You know, to your coworkers or your friends or acquaintances on the street is one thing, but you're at work, goddammit. You're not supposed to, you know, pretty much call me a stupid asshole, you know, when I'm your patient. But I didn't say anything, I let it slide, okay, because I'm an incredibly forgiving person. She should thank me uh, for not getting her sorry ass fired, you know, it, it, mostly because I know how fucking dumb she is, and even, even dumber than you'd expect being, you know, supposed to be a medical professional. Right. I knew that she just didn't under she couldn't even believe or comprehend the idea that there could be an atheist, you know. But I've never had the statement I'm an atheist responded to by shame on you. I've never <laughs> never heard it like that before. I don't know. Uh, that was that was my stories for today. I'll talk to you folks later.